Well, part of my job is also improvising, for example, also cleaning the car with water from the river, because on this off-road tour it's really dirty, but <laughs> we want to get some nicer shots for you, right? Well, you know, I'm not afraid to do the dirty work myself or the tidy work in this case, right? <laughs> so this is Auto Gefühl with Thomas and the VW ID4. Pro for Motion is a new all-wheel drive version. What's the logic behind that? Well, usually you get rear-wheel drive as base and then optional all-wheel drive. In the US, you directly get the strongest all-wheel drive version that looks like this. In the EU, you get the top GTX version with similar horsepower, but then it looks sportier. And now there's this version with a normal look on the exterior with a little bit less all-wheel drive power. So the GTX in Europe and the US all-wheel drive version around six seconds in the acceleration figure whereas this one here is at seven seconds and then an all-wheel drive model would be at 8.5. Let's dig into the details. You can see here the closed front grille today one in black. It's a pretty cool look especially then because the lights up here goes all the way across the vehicle. This is a very cool design feature and the retro VW logo and towards the side profile different wheel sizes of course these here are in this case 20 inch <laughs> these are the biggest 20 inch wheels and 4 meters 58 or 180 inches is the length here you know there's also the ID5 which would be the one then with the cut off roof here this coupe style the ID4 a little bit more upright here and this detail then is a little bit more prominent in the rear, my favorite feature is this light strip, once again, across the vehicle and the three-dimensional taillight, which is an option, by the way, the same as the Matrix LED is an option. You start with base lamps here. And you can see, other than that, it's a rather conservative rear, but I think a very consistent design here overall. Top speed is 180 kilometers an hour or 112 miles per hour. And the battery size, 77 kilowatt hours net. Recharging, actually goes here with the flap is officially 135 kilowatt peak but there are higher peak figures available they calculate it in a conservative way and 36 minutes from 5 to 80 percent state of charge so they are not on top of the charging game that's for sure range however something always approximately 4 kilometers or 250 miles with that battery here and it depends really on the outside temperature there will soon be a software upgrade to the 3.2 version and then they have also worked a little bit more on the efficiency in cold temperatures like we have here in Iceland it doesn't look like this but it's really cold here believe me just not here at noon <laughs> interior wise my favorites these seats here beautiful seats there are different seats available I with fabric or here then this is the microfiber trim on the US models you also get a full leather red trim so the whole interior will be 100% animal free soon steering wheel not yet but since the ID Buzz also gets the leather free steering wheel this will also be introduced and with a model year changed very soon so they're heading in the right direction right there just not with the hashtag capacitive BS buttons at the steering wheel they are backlit but still, it's always hard to press them while driving. And sometimes when you have your hand here, then you activate the, 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 you know, the volume plus button just you know, by mistake or something. That's not too good, actually. Gear switcher is right here. Soon going to show you the instruments. And look at that styling here. This is styling I would prefer. Just a black here, white contrast stitches. And then also here around the screen and so on. This is then this aluminum style and not the black piano like we have here and here. With the GTX models, for example, we had this combination sometimes that this was blue and wasn't really fitting to the red or something. But here, this is a more subtle look, the one I would go for. What do you think? Here are the digital instruments. Since the 3.1 software update, you also have the energy consumption right here in the instruments and not only in the infotainment system. That's actually quite good. Other than that, you cannot change too much here. You can, for example, change the, um, you know, the, the, the ACC and here the view like this, maybe left or right a little bit bigger, but usually you would leave it like this. And here in this vehicle, we also have the 3.2 software status and they had put this one there it is 3.2.0 
and it mainly contains bug fixes so for performance and also less failures and so on visually not so much has been done you can see this is the car internal map here on beautiful iceland yeah it's really a very very cool place this is the ac unit because here you either can control it like this or then with the slider from below they are still not backlit this is supposed to come with the facelift that they they will get the backlit but other than that it's not that easy to control it while driving it's now with less failures and less bugs that's good but still not the best infotainment system overall of course in the rear we have plenty of legroom no problem for tall adults one meters 89 or six foot two and also headroom is close but works and you can also open that yeah there's some beeping because the ignition is on here this is then the panoramic roof and it is fixed and it has this shade that's very good when it's hot that's very important and you can move around freely here it's a free tunnel here so there's no middle tunnel at all because they're using that ev platform so the rear actually gets yeah top notch rating indeed from the comfort and the space you have here and the trunk at 540 liters and this is here our traveling luggage and you can see that fits very well no problem some space for charging cables here underneath welcome to the driving lounge sport mode acceleration and let's go Plop. that was zero to 90 kilometers an hour you also heard the bottle <laughs> on michelle's side flying around from the g-force pretty quick you know this id4 pro 4 motion that's how it's marketed in europe is acceleration wise between the rear wheel drive model and the top all-wheel drive model once again in europe we have the gdx as top all-wheel drive model with around seven there's around six seconds in the acceleration figure and in the us that would be the normal all-wheel drive model which has the gtx spec acceleration wise and this one here around seven seconds so a second slower not the top horsepower tune it's just tune you know it's just software tune and it doesn't have the gtx exterior you know so um, from the visuals and comparable to the us model on the on the outside this one and when you want the all-wheel drive performance maybe a little bit soft off-roading better for towing uh, in the back and so on so pretty interesting concept and acceleration it's enough it's pretty quick and also very smooth acceleration you always have a rear axle bias because the motor at the rear axle is stronger and when we're driving normally here now we also have more power from the rear and the front motor is just active when it's really needed on demand for example in a harsh acceleration there is a normal suspension or the adaptive suspension dcc here in this all-wheel drive model you don't have the sporty setup you can go for a sporty setup however optional or then if you go for the gtx model which you can get in europe so these are so you know different options you have then with these the general hardware of this vehicle is really awesome you also have very good comfort this adaptive suspension especially is doing good job combining sportiness and comfort that's really nice and i think to go for this all-wheel drive model which is then basically the all-wheel drive model spec in the us almost is also a clever choice i think the gtx is not necessarily needed not everyone wants the very sporty character of the gtx it's still a good compromise of sportiness and comfort but here then a little bit more comfort precise steering input and indeed here when we are going also from waves here everything is even out very well at the same time the car is not leaning too much to the sides so it's a very very nice traveling feeling they have also worked on the efficiency in cold times you know cold temperatures here with the recent update with the recent software update 3.2 and however let's say it doesn't give us overall the best range on the market but also not a bad one you know so this 400 kilometers 250 miles is always quite realistic in you know slower driving or maybe like up to 100 kilometers 60 miles an hour and so on and not too cold you can score some 20 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers or even less um, that you're more like in a 25 um, kilowatt hours and 100 miles region or something but when it's cold and you drive a little bit faster 
then it's also you know more in a in a region of 22 kilowatt hours on one kilometers and then you're rather getting less than four kilometers or less than 250 miles but that's something you can approximately calculate with here at the moment also once again around 20 kilowatt hours on one kilometers which is indeed a rather realistic figure for this vehicle so you feel that hardware wise and handling wise driving wise all the experience they have from decades of work on these vehicles really play a major role and software wise finally you know picking up the game they have been late to that game to the software game but at least there are improvements which you also profit from while driving and now some soft off-roading we can also go to this traction mode and everything from the all-wheel drive and the traction system is optimized for some loose ground and the good thing here is we still have that rear wheel bias so that's also then more fun while soft off-roading for example and i mean it's not the most super off-road capable vehicle but due to the all-way drive you can get through some loose terrain and it also doesn't have the you know lowest ground clearance you should just not go then for the sports suspension because that's a little bit lower and keep it then with the you know original one here and once again also the suspension is playing a good job here because we also have a lot of potholes here then in this case and still there's decent comfort while driving it is really a lot of fun to drive this vehicle it doesn't look the most from from the exterior but it feels actually sportier than it looks because of the low center of gravity that's really a cool thing as for recuperation by the way it's also worth talking about it here when you have the d mode it's just rolling all the time and when you press the brake pedal hardly anything is happening in the very first area and that can be irritating and sometimes you're braking too late so you have to get used to it you really have to press the brake harder first all the recuperation is being used and then the real brakes set in in the b mode however when i get off the throttle then then there's stronger deceleration and especially in the id4 id5 this is to me the better setting because it prevents this you know loose of feeling so to speak because again yeah i think when you're just hitting the brake pedal just a little bit now hardly anything is happening and it happened to me now twice during this tour here that i was braking a little bit too late although i was already braking i was already on the brake pedal but hey why nothing is happening and then i had to brake harder than intended so i think brake pedal setting here not the most ideal but when you leave it in the b mode that you have a little bit more recuperation i think that is definitely a better setting than here. Ah, it's very cool here on Iceland. Wow, so beautiful. But here you can see good traction also from these tires. And also when I hit the accelerator pedal, due to that all-wheel drive, loose ground, but still hardly any wheel spin because it's even and then, you know, evenly distributed. Some more power sent to the front wheels. Let me do one more off-road acceleration and see if there's no one behind me. Because then we can see and when I really hit it all the way out there perfect traction now the difference is when I go to the sport mode let's see with it loose ground yeah maybe you've heard and also seen here in the instruments handled some wheel spin there and also uh, put some dust in the air so this is very interesting so well done in that traction mode and especially the acceleration is basically reduced a little bit that they don't have any wheel spin so that's very interesting how you can just electronically adjust that and also one of the reasons that electric all-way drives are actually very very good so they do a great job it's not that you need these mechanical links and so on here's no mechanical link between the front and the rear axle that's actually perfectly fine you know you can do so much with this all-wheel drive even in harder terrain so the basic all-wheel drive model i think is way to go here for the id4 and the id5 you don't really need the gtx this one here already has enough acceleration and also styling wise i think the normal pack is to me also a little bit more likable also from the interior here with the more subtle colors so probably we've tested the version here today that you should actually go for if you want to 
let's see the ID5 GTX we've been testing recently. ID5 with a different shape. Check out that baby over here. And of course, also one of the main competitors.